Good morning to the morning. <laughs> Good morning to you. It is the morning burrito. I'm Michael. And I'm Eric, and I'm enjoying my burrito. Well, we hope you liked our new <laughs> intro because I completely flubbed it. Um, <laughs> have a new song. Should we just start that all over again? <laughs> no, I think it's great. I think it's okay to make mistakes. Uh, what they don't know is that the first time we recorded this, um, all on you, buddy. I didn't hit the record button, so that's I mean that's that's a win. So so you're getting the second the second take, so that's good. Uh, We're a little more awake. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it is ten o'clock here on the northwest coast. Uh, well, sort of the coast. I mean, we're <laughs> we're in the desert. We're five hours from the coast. But yeah, hey, and we're close closer we're close. than I've ever lived to the coast before. So I, it's the coast. Anyway, uh, <laughs> today uh, it is gloomy and rainy and gross outside here in the northwest. I love that. I know you do because you love the coast. Oh, great! It's like rain. Coast, it's like coast living. Hey, right, it, it right is. Now. However, it could be worse. We could live in the Northeast, which is getting oh. completely hammered with snow. But it was sixty-two degrees here, and I was in a boat yesterday. I know that when I walked out of the church yesterday to go home, I was it was like four thirty, five o'clock in the afternoon, and I walked out and I was like, "There's no chill in the air." What it was what nice. is this? It's February. It was nice. <laughs> what? So yeah, it, it was very nice. It's actually been two 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 winters in a row now that I've lived in the Northwest that this has been beautiful, beautiful yeah. winters. In fact, it was so nice last night. We had people over and we sat around the campfire last night. I heard that. It was great. Well, today is actually a, a special day. It uh, is. It is one of my favorite holidays. And uh not really. It is? I'm, I'm making that up. But it's it's a fun holiday, uh, completely pointless and useless, but fun nonetheless. So it's not before, Valentine's Day. Before we get into our actual conversation today, let's talk about today's holiday. Do you know what it is? Well, and no, my, it's not Valentine's. Day. My birthday was last week. Yeah, Valentine's Day is coming. Although, again, another pointless holiday. I'm gonna get all know. mad for me saying that <laughs> Valentine's Day being pointless. Just send letters to him, not me. Hey, my wife and I don't celebrate that one, but we'll talk about that some other time. Uh, no, it's Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. No, that doesn't mean it's the day you watch the movie Groundhog Day, although you probably should. That was a good, that was a good, good movie. It would be a good day to do it. Uh, no, it's actually the day that the groundhog tells us what uh, what we can expect. From Summer winter. is coming is what it means. Maybe. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second. But it also happens to be my grandmother's birthday. She's passed away since, but uh, happy birthday, Grandma. Uh, we miss you. Um, hmm. But can you believe... I can. Groundhog Day has existed since 1887. Oh, is that old? 1887. 1887. Wow. That's a long time. Over 100 years. Somebody was bored back in that year. I don't think they're alive now. <laughs> If they are, they're really old. I mean, who would have thought? Like, hey, let's, let's dig a ground hole or a groundhog up out of their hole and see what they see what they think. Well, all we have to say is they are from Pennsylvania. So, yeah, I have relatives in Pennsylvania. Sorry, didn't mean to offend your Pennsylvania relatives. So, if you've ever watched the movie Groundhog Day, which I have multiple times, because I think I suffered through it once. Once? Yeah, that's it. I think so. That's too bad. Anyway. Uh, I thought when I watched that movie as a younger kid, because it came out when I was a child. I mean, you were probably a grown adult. Is this February? Uh, yes, it's February. Okay. When I watched that movie, I thought, you know, like a lot of movies, it was ma- all made up. <laughs> I did some research this morning. Oh, boy. Here we go. A lot of the things in that movie, completely Real. true. Completely. There is a place called Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Yes. There is a groundhog named Punxsutawney Phil. Mm-hmm. He comes out of a burrow that looks like a tree stump. And it's in a place called Gobbler's Knob. So if you've watched the movie, all of those things Your life just really got true. rocked, didn't it? And <laughs> when they bring him out, like they did this morning, there's people in top ha- suits and top hats and stuff. Like it's uh, a man, big deal in Pustatani. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Like, it's just. What? What? What are we doing? <laughs> This is this. It's an American thing. Like I can't imagine that this is happening in other cultures. I, w- I wonder where it really did originate, though. Did, was it really Americans? Uh, I looked at Wikipedia. Take it for what it's worth. Oh, it, well. There is apparently traditions in like Germany and stuff. So, hmm. you know, we can thank the Germans for that one. Um, but if you don't know, 
if the groundhog s- comes out of its burrow and it's sunny outside and it sees its shadow and it runs back into its burrow, six more weeks of winter. A little weird considering... That means 62 would, degrees more for us. for us. But you would think that if he, he saw the sun, it'd be like, summertime, spring, let's go. Yep. But no, that's not the case. If it's cloudy and gross like it is here right now, then he doesn't see a shadow. That means spring is coming. Hey, so. He thinks backwards like a lot of things right now. <laughs> Which is where we're going in this conversation. <laughs> so enough about the stupid groundhog because um, it's all bunk and not real. And it, he's not a meteorologist, so I'm not going to trust him. He's probably more right than the meteorologist, actually. You know, it is true, though, that the meteorologist, it's one of the only jobs you can Very get true. paid six figures and be wrong. Very true. 80% of the time. It was supposed to be sunny today. I mean, think about it. Yep. If I had a do-over, maybe that's what I should have went and did is become a, a meteorologist. Do you think if we were wrong all the time, you think they'd still pay us? No, we'd no. be fired. <laughs> Done. Out of here. <laughs> we'd be moving on to something else. Yeah. Okay. So what are we talking about? So... <clears throat> As somebody who works for you, sometimes I feel like you don't listen. Mm-hmm. And so I want to I approach the conversation. And somebody of, who has employed you, sometimes I don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, then we're fair. <laughs> fair enough. Okay. So why don't people listen? <laughs> to what? Anything. <laughs> okay, so the premise of this conversation today is that, you know, some people, all people, they're listening to something... Yep, but not always the right things. And <laughs> when it comes to our personal relationships, we oftentimes struggle to truly listen, to 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 understand yeah. what people are saying. So we're going to try and unpack this a little bit. This is kind of a broad subject, but it really does affect a lot in our lives. So let's start with just the basic question. Why don't people listen to each other? Because I'm trying to figure out what my TV show is talking about. Like I get in trouble sometimes, and I'm sure and I'm sure you Sharon, do too out there. Sharon, Sharon nails you for it, huh? Uh, so, well, I don't know about nail. That's kind of strong, but yeah, she give you the smack on the back. Yeah, of the head. no, I don't get uh, no, no. She sits on the other side of the room, but um, <laughs> she's not going to get up to come and smack you. <laughs> but I mean, really, I mean, you know, you're focused on something that you want to hear and be involved in, and you've got, you know, I've got four kids running around the house and making noise and dishes clanging and somebody talking and asking questions, somebody else talking and asking questions, and they're talking between themselves. I'm trying to hear what's on TV, and then my wife tells me to do something. I never hear it. It doesn't get done, and guess what? I didn't hear any of it. Imagine being back to the uh, you know toddler. Oh, infant. man, I am glad those days are done. <laughs> yes. Because uh, I don't hear anything anymore. Uh, when I play video games, i got to put on the big old muffs because otherwise I can't focus on anything. <laughs> Oh, but so, I do play with one of our students just as as a, as an, a funny aside, and I hope he watches this because he's gonna love this. Or or Kelly, our friend Kelly, would would love this. But uh, this particular student, when I play video games with them, they uh, right in their microphone. And so when you're playing Call of Duty, which is what we play most of the time, you know, you're the way the game is set up with your headphones, you can hear people you know like you can hear footsteps and things and so when he's chomping num, 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 i can't hear You'd anything hear nothing and so it'll be like bah <laughs> dude you just made me die again <laughs> or he'll do the, <sighs> the 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 darth vader into the microphone Ugh. emilio you're in trouble him. oh see now you called him out i was I trying did. not to I call him out, out but he can man up he can he should uh you know, one of the other things when it comes to listening that I think is a real problem, um, at least what I've experienced, um, and I, I've been guilty of it, I'm sure, is that when we get into conversations that aren't necessarily about controversial topics, but have some controversy to them, you know, there's some debate, some argument to the conversation, um, we as humans tend to begin thinking about our next response before we actually listen to what the person is telling us. Mm. And so right. we spend that entire argument, debate, whatever you want to call it, not really hearing the other side, but just 
trying to one up and it becomes this game of who's going to be the last word, who's going to have that last ding on the on the board, mm -hmm. that little check on the board. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what it, what ends up happening is there's there's no listening, there's no agreement, there's no even agree to disagree, it's just I'm mad at you because you don't agree with me. Cuz neither one is listening to right. each other. So does the issue of not listening lead to anything? What are some of the issues that come out of not listening? Yeah, not listening. Well, you get things wrong, right? You miss details. You get things wrong, um, which affects life in your moment. Um, but I think it affects your, your – you're just so lonely, Um and I think when you're not feeling like you're being heard, um, it's uh, it's devastating sometimes. I mean, look at our suicide rate. Um, our suicide rate, you know, has gone up for lots of different reasons. Um, but still, one of the reasons why suicide rate is so high, and maybe we can post the uh, number suicide hotline on here, um, but uh, is nobody nobody is is listening to my cry my care my need my wants my desires and i mean so that's that hurts mm -hmm. you know that's a, that's a real thing um anxiety levels i think go up depression sucks you back into a dark you know hole um yeah self esteem i mean uh, if you're in a group of two or three people and you make a comment and nobody responds or responds favorably to your comment <laughs> well i guess i'm not going to make another comment you know, I mean, I think self-esteem, and then that takes you to your next relationship or your next conversation, and you just then you don't say anything, right? So, yeah, so, no, it's, it's so, a snowball. So, do you think that uh, will equate to you know the feelings of self-worth, self-image? Sure, could, yeah. So, you brought up suicide, depression, anxiety, loneliness, a whole list, yeah. Um, what do what are the um, bigger picture effects of not listening? Where 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 can we see signs of listening is not happening in our culture? Where 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 are people <laughs> where where is that evident the most right now? Really, we're gonna go there. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we're gonna go there. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, just look at our our political world. Um, I mean, nobody's listening to anybody. Um, as an example. I mean, it's certainly in our right? con personal conversations about politics, it, right? It, it is. Um, it's to the point to where we can't even talk to each other about really anything, um, without, without it being a, a, I don't know, a, a leverage of disagreement in there, trying to prove your point, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, that'd be one, one area. I think it, it impacts, you know, life. I mean, look at, look, just look at where we are. I also think, uh, it impacts in the church. I mean, uh, the church, I mean, we, we have conversations with people all the time, don't we? That, man, they, they're they not listening to what they're reading in the Word. They're not listening to what's being taught. They're not listening to their small groups. They're not listening to their accountability partner. And, and that affects their marriages, how they raise their kids, how they do their finances. It, ra it, it raises uh, those self-esteem issues, the confidence level in somebody's life. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And we've seen that listening can play a huge role in marriages um, huge. failing um, or, succeeding, or succeeding, right? Um, you know, we made a joke or you made a joke about, you know, not listening when you're watching a show or whatever. And, you know, I said your wife, you know, dings you for that or whatever. But the reality is we take that very seriously with our wives of listening to our wives. Mm -hmm. And we may not get it right all the time. I'm sure I don't. <laughs> if my wife was here, she'd probably say no. But... Uh, same with our kids. I don't know that we please, always listen please to Please, his wife, text in right now, will you? Will you just type something in there to let us know that, that yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, but I know of more than one marriage that one of the primary reasons that it failed and divorce ended up happening was because of listening not being done mm -hmm. on either side or one right. side. Um, you know, there's no understanding. And so listening is a really crucial piece. And one of the questions that comes to mind is, is there a difference between hearing somebody and listening to somebody? Yeah, they're not the same thing at all. Um, I think you can look at it two ways. Because um, I can listen to somebody and not hear what they're saying. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not hearing their heart. I'm not hearing their, you know, their, their point of view. 
I'm not hearing and understanding where they're coming from or where they want to head with something. But man, I can listen all day long and um, I can have that selective hearing, mm-hmm. you know, selective listening. And then my response is going to be pretty weak um, in that. But hey, at least I sat there and gave you FaceTime, mm-hmm. you know, and that's not the kind of leader any of us want to be. Um, any kind of husband, dad, I mean, employee, I mean, um, but so, yeah, I, I think they are they are different. Okay. We've talked about what listening can do if you're not doing it. But what if you're listening to the wrong things? There are, uh, let's take it down specific to the church. There are people listening to things that are not correct, right? Um, from social issues to theological issues to societal issues, whatever. Um how do you know you're listening to the right thing? So if you're if you're really intent on listening, how do you know you're listening to the right stuff? Well, I think it goes through your filter. I mean, what do you what's your filter? I think that's the real question. Um, you know, behind what you're asking, uh, do you filter things through the Word of God? Uh, if you do, I mean, there's there's markers. I mean, you know what God's voice sounds like. If you're if you're a person that's in the Word, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, I I, I talk quite often that I don't filter <clears throat> excuse me I don't filter everything through a political eye right or a political filter mm-hmm. um I don't think politics all day long um actually hardly um because I filter everything through my life in my relationship with Christ so so for me I I know that if I'm really listening and filtering through I can discern Right, I have an easier time discerning what is true and what isn't, um, and that goes for in the church too. <clears throat> so we have take any issue, just pick an issue. <clears throat> you can go to church A or denomination A or non-denominational A, and they'll have one point of view, and then church two has a whole different view. But they're using the same scripture. So as a as a if I if I'm putting myself in the shoes of somebody who's not a pastor, who's not, you know, knowledgeable in how to discern between those, how do you filter that? Because that can be very difficult when you're listening, you know, like let's say you go to our church, Hermnaz, and you're listening to Pastor X on TV. They may not preach things that you and I preach when we preach on a Sunday morning. How do they filter what's right and what's wrong? Who's right? Who's wrong? If we're both <laughs> using scripture, yeah, that that's a whole different podcast. It is, but it's it's an important. Just we have to be listening to the right thing. You have, have to listen to the right thing. Yep, you do. And listen, if it's not if it's not based on Jesus Christ in the gospel, um, then it's, it, you're probably listening to the wrong thing. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I mean, because we're not doing the other podcast. I mean, that in a nutshell is it. I mean. Uh, we can talk denominations. Everybody has something different. Yeah, theology. Everybody has something different. Um, Even controversial issues. We controversial have issues. Something different. Um, and that's not all wrong. Um, we're not saying that's wrong at all. It's it's the idea of coming alongside what you know in your heart to be true, and what God is is laying on your heart as a burden, and you're going to interpret that through how you read God's word. Now there is some. And we'll get into this, I'm sure, in a different podcast. You know, the the whole false prophet, the whole false teaching, you know, mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, you got to pay attention to what you're listening to. Um, but the idea is, is you got to be listening. Um, if we're not listening, we're not going to hear, and then therefore you're not going to grow either in a relationship or a relationship with the Lord. So we've laid out the problem. We've even talked about the solution. To a certain extent, but let's let's really dig down deep. Let's get more personal. How do you, if you are somebody who is watching this or listening to this today, um, and you really struggle to actually listen to, you know, whether it's your spouse, your kids, um, you know, the filter we talked about, how do you begin to change that? What are what are what is the process you need to go through to to change your life? in such a way that you can be a good listener, that you can filter properly mm. so that you can be, you know, can live, use the word on Sunday when you were preaching, 
thrive so that you can mm-hmm. thrive because that's being a good listener helps you to thrive in life mm-hmm. you know in all areas not just you know <coughs> personal relationships but work whatever so what are what are some of the things that you think would be helpful to help somebody move in that direction and become a better listener i think you always have to come back and ask the question what did i hear you say i mean i, I think that's just good that's just good listening good counseling um uh, always asking so did i hear you say mm-hmm. what is it you un- uh, understand that i'm saying um, because I, it, it tunes you in, and a lot of times I, I get corrected in those moments, you know, because I, I, maybe I, I didn't really hear what I was supposed to hear. Um, so I'd be one. I always come back, ask question, ask question, what, what's going on? What did I hear you say? Uh, I think another thing would be is uh, y- your posture has got to be a posture. You know, we talked Sunday about, uh, the last two Sundays, about being in a posture to where you can hear God. Um, posturing, th- there is a thing of posturing. Um, if you go to a counselor and you're paying for a counselor and he sits there, I mean, you're, you're one, you're getting ripped off, <laughs> right? He's probably yeah. bored. Uh, he probably, probably could care less about, you know, your, your words that you're, you're saying. Um, so, so posturing is huge, um, in a, in a conversation. Um, and again, if it's romantic, you're going to be in one posture, right? If you're at a ball game, it's going to be a whole different posture, um, if you're in church, hopefully you're awake because, I mean, that's a posture, right? Um, so posturing, those might be my top two. Ask questions and your posture. I think also you need to um, make it priority and intention. Um, having priority and intention when you're, you know, if you if you know you're, you're zoned in on a TV show and you know that it's going to be really difficult for uh, you to listen to your spouse or to your kids or whatever. Got to hit the mute button. It Maybe, but... You know, if you can work it out with your spouse or your kids, hey, give me five more minutes, and then you actually take after that five minutes after the show's yeah. over, you pause and stop and go and listen so you can focus. Um, that is that that intentionality speaks a lot. You know, yes, this show is important to me, and I want to watch it. You know, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I have I have my shows, um, I have my things that I do that I, my kids and my wife know. Don't well. The little one doesn't know yet. She will know. Um, but I also give my wife space and time to speak, where I'm fully engaged in listening. Um, you know, each day, so that there's never a question of does my husband lis- listen to me. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you're when you're in these conversations we talked about before, whether it's political or controversial. Number one. This is a principle everybody needs to learn, and apparently we've forgotten it as a culture. It's okay to disagree on things. We don't have to agree mm-hmm. to still love each other, care about each other, and be in relationship with one another. Eric and I, we have a great working relationship, friendship, but we don't agree on everything. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I don't know if we agree on how we fish. I don't have a list, but yeah. <laughs> My wife and I certainly don't agree on everything, but... On the important things, we agree. Yeah, but it, but it's it's not just that. I think I think we've lost the ability to not have to prove ourselves. Mm. Um, you know, it used to be back in the in the good old day. I'm older than you, um, a little bit. So so back in the good old day, we could agree to disagree and leave it alone. Um, but anymore, we can agree to disagree, but I'm still going to prove myself. Um, let me just watch the chatter. Right, just, I gotta get the last. Word. I gotta get the last word in. Um, it, even in leadership meetings. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I was part of a meeting here not too long ago where you want to leave a meeting united in agreement, even if that agreement is we agree to disagree. Everybody thinks, hey, uh, when you leave a meeting, everybody was you know unanimous, you know about things. Unanimous doesn't mean everybody was in total agreement. Unanimous means everybody agrees. That this is how we're leaving the room and we're moving forward. Um, but this meeting I was in, um, it, those that were running the meeting, it was like, well, we'll agree to disagree. But, and they kept going. And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm listening. It was a Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm listening to this meeting. I'm thinking, this is going nowhere. And, and these are, are some of our leaders. And, and they've lost the ability to agree to disagree. 
So to to close us out for today, this is a little shorter show than we've had recently, um, but I think it's been a good a good show and a good um, opens the door for conversation. Yeah, I, I just want to encourage you. You know, if you if you struggle with listening, you don't have to live in that. You don't have to just deal with it. Um, you can improve at your listening skills. Use the things that we've talked about here today, um, and keep in mind listening matters it's it's not this is not something that affects nobody it affects everybody yeah. and it will affect your relationships it will affect your church relationship if you have one uh, your work environment all of those things so this is worth working on in your personal life and you know I, I think I jump on that and really look at hey if you're one that's feeling like you're not being listened to, and you're feeling alone, and you're feeling like nobody cares, and your self-esteem is in the tank, and you know you're just, I don't know, at wit's end. Um, maybe you're not quite that that serious. Maybe you're just feeling like, man, it's just kind of doom and gloom, and kind of, I mean, it's gray skies outside, it's raining, and that's kind of takes on your attitude, and you just feel like you're lonely. You feel like you're all alone, and you feel like there's there's nobody there. Listen. Um, one thing that I know Herm Naz does, like our church does, if you're not part of church, jump in church because there's life in the church, and uh, and it's vital. I mean, there's no greater organization on planet Earth than the church um, because it gives you a way out from this cloud of not being listened to or feeling like you're not listened to. But there's one person that that listens, and uh, you can find it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. And uh, the words are, hey, your father knows what you need before you ask him. So um, that, I think, draws our, our heart and our attention back, back on point, back on focus. So maybe today, wherever you are um, and you're feeling that way, listen, man, there is someone, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, that knows your need, right, even when you think nobody else cares. So he knows it before you speak it. He knows it before you pray it. Um, but tell him what you want. Tell him what you need. So there you go. Yeah. Well, that's been a great uh, podcast uh, this week. We are on episode 14. Can you Is this that? 14? This is 14. Wow. And it's uh, February. And it's February. Yeah. Man, I lost a couple days here somewhere. And not a leap year this year. was last it's year. It's not. You're right. Um, so we uh, we have another show coming up, of course, next week, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. And uh, we, uh, we're still talking through our next subject, but it may be... Maybe something that will pique your interest. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that really? It's, just, it's what they call a teaser in the industry. Did I, hope, I hope that teased you. You don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. Okay, I, I'll be here. We're on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor.fm, and all the other ways you find us, Facebook and whatnot. So uh, keep tuning in. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. See ya.